So we're already entering the atmosphere here, which is great. And there it is. That's the, the aerodynamic effects there. So we're generating a lot of heat. This is it. We got one shot. I'm Timothy Swark. I'm a mechatronics engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I'm working on the sampling system for the next Mars rover. So what I do is I'm working on the drill for the rover, specifically the parts of the drill that make it spin. Well, this coring drill is going to go to Mars and acquire rock samples and prepare them for return to Earth. So my master's and PhD are in aeronautics and astronautics, which uh, I think they're Greek for um, air sailing and star sailing. It's kind of crazy they gave me a degree in star sailing without having been to space myself, but uh, I'll take it. I was thinking a fun mission to do would be to try to replicate a rover that goes to Mars. That's kind of what I know best. And we'll start by picking our rover body. Next thing I think everyone would agree on is that rovers have wheels, so we'll go with that next. That looks like a good start. When we go to Mars, we want to be able to do science. That's, that's really the purpose. And so what this drill here is going to do, it's going to allow us to take soil samples. And we can learn about the geology of the planet. That looks like a, a pretty capable science machine. I'm pretty impressed with the game so far in that it's got a lot of very realistic parts. This chunk of parts you see on screen here is probably a couple hundred people, four or five years worth of time. The next thing to do is to get this down to the surface. We have power, we have communications, we have mobility. I think I'm gonna try this out. I guess I just need a good name for it. How do they come up with the names just in real life? Yeah, um, usually they have essay contests and they ask uh, school children to write in with a word and, and why they think it's a good fit for the rover. No wonder they ask kids, they seem to be a lot more creative than, than I am about this. I mean, what's an inspiring word? Triumph. Triumph. Triumph's a pretty good name, because uh, that's what I expect to see here. It starts with T, so it is my name. Let's go with Triumph. Triumph 1. So what we'll do is we'll activate the engines and then uh, we can separate and we can look at how the rover rolls around. Okay, okay. Okay, it's flying, it's flying. What I'm trying to do is keep straight up. Hey, we did it. We did it. Just, oh, that's perfect. That is a rover right there. So it, we just need to sort of cut and paste this onto Mars and it'll be a great day for Kerbal history. So the next thing we gotta do is, is take this chunk of parts and get it from space down to the surface in a controlled way. This is gonna need a pretty big rocket. We also need to give this a heat shield because these little wheels here are not gonna stand up well to the heating of on another planet. So to get to Mars, uh, it takes between six and nine months or so. So we need to make sure that we have uh, some good power um, to get through space. We wanna have good communications back with home. We'll give it some fuel. We'll give it its own set of thrusters for sort of fine tuning the path. You know, we talked about having this thing land and, and make its way through the atmosphere of Mars. It's also got to leave the atmosphere of Earth. And so we want to have this thing be protected and streamlined. Make ourselves a nice fairing. That's what this is called. So that'll break away once we get into space and there's no more air to travel through anymore. This is the second stage of the rocket that I'm going to be working on. This will sort of take over when we're uh, most of the way above the Earth and, and into orbit around the Earth. This needs an engine. I'm really looking for a, a good efficiency rating here. Higher number is better. Let's go with this one. And then put some more rockets on it. A few more things here, some fins to help steer us. The way things are looking now, Mars is over here, which means when we get to Mars's orbit, it's gonna be there. So I'm gonna take the luxury of speeding up time. Okay, so this is, this is starting to look a little better here. Okay, that's, that's good. Now we have our launch day. Well, I think the alignment of the planets and the orientation of our planet here are, are all aligned for this to work. This is our opportunity, let's go for it. And this, this point here, AP, apoapsis, is going to tell us the highest point that our rocket's going to get to. So in order to get to orbit, we need to go up to get out of the atmosphere, and then we need to go sideways. We're actually going really fast through the atmosphere here, and there's no need to do that. Let's get up above the atmosphere where the, where the air is less thick, there's less drag, and then start going faster. Increasing the altitude, adding speed. 
It's looking good so far. I'm a little worried I might have used up a little bit too much fuel early on because I was talking instead of rocket engineering. So pretty soon our first stage is gonna run out. That's fine, we have a second stage rocket. Here we go, we just keep on going. We have a brand new fuel tank and a much lighter craft now. So this is gonna work really well. We're in a stable orbit around the planet. I wanna leave the vicinity of our planet moving to the right. That's the direction that the planet's already going. So our speeds are gonna to add together and that's gonna help us get to, to Mars more easily. This game's nice, it tells us how many meters per second of speed we need to add. And so I just wait till that gets to the bottom of the bar there. And in the meantime, you see that my, my orbit is changing here and it's changing to fit this hypothetical trajectory that we set up a few minutes earlier. So what I'm trying to do is get, get these two arrows to line up. And what those arrows represent are the locations of my craft and Mars at their closest. There we go. So now we're on a path to actually reach the planet. I'm uh, trying to find a, a direction and amount of fuel to use in order to get to the planet more efficiently. Right now it's asking for me to fire the engine and add 1,490 meters per second worth of speed. And that's a lot. That's probably more than our rocket has left in it. So I'm trying to kind of say, well, all right, if we get there a little later, coming from a slightly different angle, can we get on a more efficient path? I think we'll get there. All right, so now we're pointing in the right direction. Our orbit is shifting a little bit and we're gonna run out of fuel in our upper stage soon. I'm gonna use the thrusters on the crew stage to uh, make up for that extra bit of course correction that it didn't have available from the rocket. So in the game, we've been in space for nine days. The way things really work, I wouldn't have brought the rocket so deep into space with me, but uh, I needed the rest of its fuel, its propellant rather. Really the next thing to do is just to accelerate time and watch as the planets follow their motions and as our spacecraft follows its path around the sun and to meet Mars at this location that we've set up. We don't want to warp past the planet. In real life, that's not a concern, only when you're playing a game using time acceleration. So our course corrections were pretty successful. It's actually showing us hitting the planet if we don't do any further course corrections. So now it seems like we're on a good trajectory. Look at that, pretty cool. It's beautiful in the game. Can't imagine what it would look like in real life. We're now getting close enough that we don't really need the crew stage anymore. So I'm gonna point the heat shield in the direction that we're going. And we can separate now from the crew stage. And so now it's just the descent and the rover and the heat shield that are left. So we're already entering the atmosphere here. And there it is, that's the, the aerodynamic effects there. So we're generating a lot of heat, but it's redirecting the hot gases away from the craft. It looks like we're headed for some kind of low depression area there. This is it, we got one shot. There they go, okay. Parachutes are open, so now we're slowing down a substantial amount more. If I release the parachutes too early, then there's just a lot greater distance to fall, so I'm gonna use them for a little bit longer. Get our engines ready. Uh, cut one of the chutes and cut the other. Point straight up. Don't wanna go back up. I wanna keep us pointed somewhere between straight up and the direction that we're falling so that we lose some of our horizontal speed at the same time as we continue to descend and slow down. Uh, I think we're getting pretty close to the ground here. We're at five meters a second, that's good. There's our shadow. Slow down a little more. Oh! <laughs> I ran out of fuel at the last possible second, but we're there, we're safe, look, we're on Mars. Uh, so there's a term for what you just witnessed. It's called the seven minutes of terror. That's the time from the minute that the craft first strikes the top of the atmosphere until it's ideally down on the ground safely. I'm gonna do maybe the most risky thing of all and then is take the brake off and see if we can drive this thing. Okay, we're driving. We're driving on another planet. We can go up the hill, we can go down the hill. Let's drill for some samples. Let's learn about what's underground. Let's see if this way oversized drill for our little rover here is, is of any value. And since we got two of them, we might as well use both of them. There's a whole planet worth of exploration to be done now. So that's how to land a rover on Mars, or on Duna as the game calls it, and do some science along the way.